I'm Justin Everton with the Nebraska Forest Service and the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum. And we're here in Waverly today in Wayne Park to talk about the growing issue of herbicide damage on trees. Before we do that, let's remind ourselves of how important trees are. Here in Nebraska, where it can be very hot in the summertime and winds blow incessantly, trees just make our lives more comfortable. We're physically more comfortable. And then the other benefits of trees, such as energy conservation, wildlife habitat, storm water capture, and then finally, trees are just beautiful. People love them in their daily lives and they make our lives more enjoyable. And always remember this about trees in Nebraska, they didn't get here by accident. People planted them looking for those benefits that trees provide. In recent years, we've seen a dramatic increase in herbicide damage to trees across Nebraska from two primary sources. One is related to the spraying of lawns and lawn care, and the other is the spraying of farm fields in the spring to burn down winter annual weeds. And we've seen a dramatic increase in recent years to trees, the herbicide damage to trees. And it's most noticeable, we don't often notice it in the background of, as we're walking around trees, but if you look closely, you can see pretty significant uh, evidence of how these trees are damaged. For example, here is a redbud leaf, uh, which is a normal leaf that we would want to see on a redbud tree. And when we look closer, herbicide damaged leaves are much smaller and distorted, twisted, gnarled. They just don't look right. And we see this across several species. The redbud is a key indicator, but other common species we're seeing this on include various types of oaks, other legumes like honey locust, and then other trees like green ash and tulip poplar clearly show this damage uh, of the herbicide drift. The damage that we're talking about to our trees happens in a couple of different ways. One of the most important issues we're running in now is the amount of herbicide drift coming from farm spraying. In the past few years, farmers have shifted to no-till practices and herbicides more, are more important than ever to treat weeds in our farm fields. We're also applying quite a bit of herbicide in our communities, on the lawns that we are around us. And in both of those efforts, these chemicals can get into the air and move off site and damage trees far away from where they were applied. So it's critical to uh, really practice best management practices in our herbicide spraying. Think about things like integrated pest management, the time of day we spray, and let's make sure we're not spraying on hot and windy days. And then finally, make sure you've adjusted those nozzles so they're not putting out a fine mist that is getting into the atmosphere and moving. Remember, the ultimate goal here is to keep our trees healthy and alive. They're ubiquitous. They're in the background of our daily lives and they're important to a lot of people. They're important to our rural farmsteads. They're important in our communities. And they are even important in our nurseries and how we grow trees and distribute them in our, uh, across our state. I'm Bruce Hoffman uh, with Common Sense Greenhouse Nursery in McCook, Nebraska. That's in southwest Nebraska. And we're standing in the middle of our field trees. And we're going to discuss how herbicides can affect a business uh, that grows trees for a living and how it, affect, how it affects us. Chemicals are a part of our culture here. Uh, No-till farming is a boon to producers in our area, uh, growing crops that never would have been thought of years ago. The downside is the chemicals that they use, if they leave the property, they can affect people like us that grow nursery stock for a living. Uh, and a year ago, we took a, uh, a big dicamba hit and uh, had severe damage uh, and essentially couldn't sell any of our stock. That's the bottom line, that's how it affected us. Okay, I and I would say it's fairly common for people to, the notion that, oh, they grow through them. I even have people in, in my trade that I rely on for technical support that kind of all, uh, uh, it'll grow through it. And the damage is subtle. Uh, it isn't necessarily always uh, entire desiccation of a tree, uh, 
three inch trees, they're three inch now, American Linden, real easy tree to grow straight. Uh, they're very soft and pliable. They made a 45 degree tur turn on a 43 inch trunk last summer. Um, uh, so those kinds of things are pretty obvious when you know something's going on. To, to put an exact number on how many nursery uh, growers there are in Nebraska, uh, the, the nursery directory has uh, several hundred of us in there, so all with specialty crops. They're not all growing trees uh, and mostly all sensitive crops. Uh, this is not an anomaly. They've all been hit. Uh, so I would, people that uh, uh, are growing sensitive crops, I would encourage you to get registered with Driftwatch. Uh, there's no enforcement. It does help build a case uh, and you, and it helps protect you. Uh, that information is out there for all applicators. It's available to all applicators that you have a sensitive crop that needs protection. Uh, and for applicators, I would just say, you know, uh, not when the wind is blowing like today. Uh, the stuff does get up and move. Uh, read the label and just try to be respectful of other people's property. Not all crops are planted in April and har harvested in September. Some are uh, perennial crops that take a number of years to get to market. Uh, so, and it, uh, it affects people's bottom line. Hello, my name is Craig Romery with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture and today I'll be talking about Drift Watch and Bee Check. Both of these are, can be considered the same thing. They're an online registry and map for commercial specialty crops that usually are, are smaller in size and may not be as noticeable out there in the landscape. Uh, they're potentially more sensitive to pesticide inju injury and crop loss. The main purpose of this, this service is to promote communication, two-way communication between pesticide applicators and the people that have those specialty crops and apiary sites. This is an example of the Driftwatch map showing a variety of, of crops um, and you can zoom into those locations to get, get a better idea of where they're, where they're at and you can click on any of those bubbles to get the contact information for the the grower having that site if they have made that contact information available. And if so, you can contact them and let them know what, what you plan to do in that area. So there are three ways you can use this service. Uh, the first way is to just simply go to the website and I'll provide that URL uh, later. And this is free of charge. You'll be able to see all of the crop sites and most of the beehives. Beekeepers have the option to only display their sites to registered applicators, applicators who are registered in Driftwatch, and so you may not see all of them at the public map. The second way is to register uh, yourself on Fieldwatch and Driftwatch as an applicator, and that's also free of charge. You'll be able to see all of the crop sites, all of the beehives, and you'll get email notifications when new information is added to the map in the area that you select. And lastly, on this section, you'll be able to download the Field Check app, and that's new this year, available on your smartphone so that you'll have that information readily at hand. And the last thing is a, a data member membership for data subscription, and that is an annual fee from FieldWatch. And you can, by having that, you'll be able to get that, these data to your mapping software. And that is also free of charge for federal, local, state government agencies as well. So please, you can take, a, take advantage of that service. So this is the website, uh, fieldwatch.com. And this is where applicators need to go to register. Clicking this image right here of the airplane, and it's also called Fieldwatch. And if you don't want to register, if you just want to go to the Driftwatch map, you can go to the address down at the bottom of the screen. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, this is my contact information and I'll, I'll try to help you as best I can.